Glory to God. All right, man, it's good to be here with you guys. Praise God and thank God for you. Um, the power in the name of Jesus. Do we really understand the power in the name of Jesus? Some of us might think the power is in us, but it's not. Just need to let you know that today, that the power is not in us. The power is in the name of Jesus and what he will do in your life. Let me pray. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. I thank you for the men that are here today, Lord. I pray that someone may come to know Jesus today. I pray that someone may come back. I pray that someone may be refreshing through the words that are spoken at this conference with all the speakers, Father. I thank you for their heart. Thank you for their love. Thank you for Frank KKLA putting on a conference like this because, Lord, it is needed for men to understand who they are and the purpose of their life and why you created them. We be sure to give you honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, when I think about it, I wasn't always like this. I was a heathen. I like to share it. I like to keep it real. I was a liar, cheater, womanizer, alcoholic, drug addict, baseball player, rich, and a sinner. Saved by grace. Amen. Only by grace. Only by his grace. Only by his grace and his love. And, and I don't deserve it. Oh, yeah, some of y'all don't even hear me. I don't deserve it, but he gives it to you anyway. When you can understand you don't deserve it and he gives it to you, then you can understand the creation of you and why God created you. You know, because God created us for more than just titles, positions, what we do and what we accomplish. And we need to know that in Christ. Because Jesus, Jesus was never concerned about me hitting home runs. Fans was and media was, but Jesus was never concerned about that. Jesus was concerned was all going to be well in my soul. And that's what he's concerned with you that are here, that's here today, is all well in your soul. Not about what I accomplished, not about who I am, but it's all well in my soul. See, because the enemy do not want you to know who you are. Who you are in Christ. See, if you ever get to that place of finding out who you are in Christ, you'll find the greatness of why God created you. See, there was a creation from your mother and father from God that you would be here at this time, at this conference, and he would speak to you to bring about a transformation in some of your lives here today. Some of you need a transformation by God. And that's the greatest gift I ever received was the transformation by God. See, you better, see you, 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 better off, you better off in your life right now, you better off just to go ahead and obey God. See, I didn't obey God. How many of us have been like that? Well, I just don't obey God. You better off to go ahead and obey God instead of having God bring you to your knees, because he will. And the reason he does that is because he loves us. He has no other reason to bring us to our knees if he didn't love us. He loves us right where we're at, right in the midst of all the brokenness, right in the midst of all the confusion. Some are here today. You don't know why you came, but God knows why you came. Because God's going to speak a word through somebody, and somebody's going to touch you, and it's going to ignite you, and your life is going to change, and it will never be the same. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to be reading from the text of John 10, 10 today. And it talks about the thief does not come except to steal, 
kill, and destroy. Jesus is saying this. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. He's not talking about stuff. Too many of us get to the abundant life and we want stuff. He's talking about his love. He's talking about his power. He's talking about wisdom. He's talking about knowledge. He's talking about all the things that is pertaining from this book, the book of life. The good news is the gospel. And a lot of us don't understand the good news is because we don't pick it up. You know, the Bible says my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. There's no understanding of God's word. See, I didn't understand none of that. See, I was a worldly-minded man. They told me I was this great baseball player and you can have all this and have all that. The devil is a liar. Because he comes to deceive you, finding my identity in Christ. He comes to deceive you. The enemy comes to deceive you so you do not know who you are in Christ. The enemy purpose is to deceive you. There's three points in the first part of that text. Still kill and destroy. He's on his job 24-7. And he's going to continue to be on his job 24-7. He comes to steal your identity so you do not know who you are. He comes to rob you and steal your identity so you do not know who you are. He'll let you be successful. He'll let you have all this. He'll let you think you're all that. That's just what it was for me. He allowed me to be all that as a baseball player and all the championships, the money, living on the golf course, sick. Never wanted me to know who I was. Taking my identity from so I couldn't know who I was in Christ. And what a lot of us say, well, well, I get tempted for all this. Well, you go to Matthew 4, 4, Jesus, he did the same thing to Jesus, tempted Jesus. Jesus said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if we don't know the word of God, we can't fight the enemy off. He's, he rules and reigns over us because he knows we don't know the word of God. And that's what it was before me. You know, he stole my identity. I used to go to church. I used to be in church um, and go into the church and hallelujah and praise you and thank you, Jesus. And I walk out, the devil said, you don't know Jesus. And he was right. I knew his name was Jesus, but I never became a follower. It wasn't until I became a follower of Jesus, then I knew the power. So he steals your identity so you don't know who you are. So I'm sitting here today, he's stolen your identity so you don't know who you are. You're still trying to figure it out. But before this conference is over and all the speakers, I believe you'll figure it out. Amen. Number two, he comes to kill your purpose so you do not know why you exist. He comes to kill the purpose so you do not know why you exist. That's what he comes to kill inside of you. If you, can, if you never know the purpose of why you were created, you'll never know the greatness of who Jesus is. See, we missed the point of who Jesus is. And I think just like the Roman Empire, they had no idea who he was when they was hanging him on the cross. They didn't realize that he was the Messiah. They just thought he was another man, but they didn't realize that he was the Messiah. And they didn't realize that on, on the third day that he was going to get up. They didn't realize that. And they didn't realize that not only was he going to get up, but he got up with all power. So he just didn't get up. He just didn't get up. He got up with something else, all power. So that's why we're able to operate like we're able to operate, because his power and his spirit dwells in us. There's no other way to operate like this. I can't operate like this on my own because I can't do this. And how many of you say that? I told God, I can't do this. I can't preach. I can't do this. God said, you're not going to do it. The Holy Spirit's going to do it through you. So we need to understand. We need to understand who's operating in us. It is not us. It is Christ that operates 
in us through the Holy Spirit. And if we allow him to be Lord over our life and not just be playing church and not just be coming to to men's conference and and not getting nothing out of it and not going home and having a, a transformation and having a change about my life. It's a change about my life. See, when you come in and you all in with Christ, your life should change. Is it going to be some trials and tribulations? Yeah. Is it going to be some challenges? Yes. But you still have to connect with men who are serious about their walk with Christ. He comes to number three. He comes to destroy your mission so you do not know what to do. He comes to destroy your mission. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's not playing. And we need to understand that. In this time, in this day we're living in, we need to understand that the enemy is not playing. He's on the move. So as Christians and men of God, we have to be on the move. We can't compromise. Too many of us compromise and too many of us want to fit in with this and want to fit in. I don't want to fit in with anybody. I, I, everybody I play with, I'll, guess what? When I became a true follower of Christ, I lost them. They went the other way. You know what? Goodbye. <laughs> and we need to understand that. You, go, you, you can't compromise. Eventually, you're going to have to say goodbye to something to do something different for yourself. If you never say goodbye to the foolishness of the world, you'll never change. Too many of us want to be this, we want to be that, but we don't want to be all we need to be in Christ. Because if you cross over on the other side, you can be all you want to be in Christ. We're trying to be all we want to be in ourselves. It will never work. It will never work. Money, success, it will ne- never work. I was rich and I was miserable. I had a baseball career. I love playing. I love achieving. I love winning. But who am I? It would never work. Been there. Done it. Remember when I signed a $20 million contract to come play in L.A.? I was miserable. Because I'd already made $8 million. I already had homes, cars, and stuff. Now I just signed another contract to come here and play. But I was miserable inside. And I went to a conference, a more surreal conference, and got radical saved. Power God came over me and says, your life will never be the same. All hell's about to break loose. That's what he told me at the conference. Your life will never be the same. All hell's about to break loose. He wasn't lying. All hell did break loose. <laughs> but guess what, gentlemen? What I'm trying to tell you is I got radical saved, but I did not get discipled. Too many of us missed the discipleship of coming to know Christ and coming to follow the commandments of God, and if you don't get discipled, you will go back to the familiar. I don't care who you are, because I'm a prime example. I don't know why God's kept me here. I don't know why. But God spoke to me clear one time when I was in the hospital in my second surgery of cancer. God said, you know what? I said, I don't want to go through this. Why don't you just let me die? He goes, it's not about you. I mean, I know, I mean, I know a lot of us, I know a lot of us think it's about us. I know we think we all that. And we're back at you. Oh, I got it going on. You're not that important. When you get to understand who Jesus is, you'll realize who is really important. You'll get to, you get to understand, you get to, you get to truly understand why he kept you. He didn't keep you for you. He kept you so you can bring a message to help others, to show all the brokenness that goes inside of a person. Only Jesus can put it back together for you. 
Nobody else can put it back together. You can keep trying everything else. Hey, I tried, <laughs> Bishop, hallelujah. I tried lawyers. I tried doctors. I paid for them all. I ended up with a T17169 in a Florida State prison. Eight-time All-Star, four-time World Series champ. Ended up in Florida Sp Florida State Prison because of addiction. God was doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. Some of y'all need to know God has done for you what you couldn't do for yourself. That's why you're still here. Amen. Jesus' purpose is for you to have peace. The three W's. Who am I? My identity. My identity. Who am I? Galatians 2.20 talks about it. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives in me. Amen. But you have to be crucified. What that means is the old you has to die. He has to die. That one was hitting grand slams and winning championships and making music. He's dead. He no longer lives because he was separated from God because of his sin. But once I got crucified, like Christ was crucified on the cross of Calvary, when they crucified him, he died, but then he was resurrected and he got up. He got up with all power. So the old, old baseball player, he's dead. He no longer lives. Now I've been crucified, so that means he died. Now I got up, I'm resurrected just like Christ. Amen. <laughs> and the thing about it is, with Christ, is not, this is not going to cost you nothing. Like most of us, everything else is going to cost you. All it's going to cost you is for you to die so you can be resurrected. And he will empower you with wisdom, knowledge, and everything else through the word. You know, not, not through me sitting there and looking at a television and trying to figure out what's going on in society and why is this and me back and forth with the television. That ain't my problem. That ain't my problem to worry about. My problem is to understand who Jesus is and know the word of God for myself so I can live this abundant life. That's what it's all about. Amen? Amen? Number two, Jesus' purpose. Why do I exist? My purpose. My purpose. Romans 8, 28 8 says, and we know, and we know all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord to those who are called according to his purpose. He said, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he said all things work together for the good of them. He didn't say some things. He said all things work together for the good. Too many of us don't even know all things work together for the good. We think some things are working, some things. Are, no, all things work together for the good. But if you don't believe it, you can't receive it. You got to believe it. You got to believe it works together for the good. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what I go through. All things work together for the good. All things. We need to know that. Matthew 20, 16 says, so the last will be first. The first will be last. Many are called, but few are chosen. Hallelujah. I'm finally glad that I know that I was chosen. When you get to the point of knowing that you're chosen, then you're able to enter in with God. God speaks to you. When you ask him for the information, when you ask the Holy Spirit to give you the information, and you ask the Holy Spirit to retain it for you, he will retain it for you in your spirit, not your head. Because, see, we're supposed to be the head of everything God has put us as men, but we are such the knuckleheads. Because we want to do it our way, and we don't want to do it God, God's way. It wasn't until I surrendered my life 
and really surrendered my life to God and started doing it God's way that I got all this information. It wasn't until I said yes to Jesus. It wasn't until, forget, you can say, yeah, yeah, I said it before. It wasn't until I said yes to Jesus and I entered in with Jesus. And you know what the Holy Spirit told me? When you finally came in and said yes to Jesus, yes, a three-letter word means you enjoy salvation. It says you get to enjoy salvation, not somebody else. You get to enjoy what this salvation is here. Aren't we so glad he is so merciful? He's a merciful God. He, keeps, he has mercy. He gives you grace, grace that we don't even deserve. He, he continues to give it to you because he's saying, he was saying to me, come on, Daryl, I'm over here. I'm over here. I got something for you. I'm going to do something in you. You can't do it. Too many of us try to do it ourselves. You can't do it. You got to allow him to lead you, to do it for you. Number three, Jesus' purpose for you to have peace. What shall I do? What shall I do? I got to know my mission. We all different. We all got a different call. You need to learn to stay in your own lane. Don't try to be like nobody else. Be like who God created you to be. Too many of us want to be like somebody else. We see somebody else preaching. We see somebody else on television. We want to be like them. See, when I played baseball, I didn't want to be like nobody but me. And God said that to me, Pastor Steve, you got you to be the same way when I call you. You got to be you. Amen. And that's what we have to do. We have to know our mission. But we don't know our mission if we're not us and if we don't have the right identity. We won't know our mission. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, we're trying to get to God, and we don't, even, we don't even go through Jesus. We don't even know who Jesus is. God, please help me. We got to know the power and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We got to know the 2,000 years ago when he walked to earth. He's the same today that he was 2,000 years ago. He's the same God. He's the same Lord. And he's trying to lead us and show us who we are in Christ. But we have to be able to accept that. A lot of times we won't accept it. We stop, you know, I remember a lot of times, you know, I wanted bits and pieces of God. I want a piece of God here, but I also want to hang out in the world here. It don't work like that. You're going to have to get all the way in with God. You're going to have to submit yourself to God. You're going to have to surrender. You're going to have to give up some things. Some things that is keeping you sick. Some things that's keeping you in bondage. You're going to have to give those up. See, I've been, I, see, I'm free today. I've been liberated. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's been set free, separated, set apart. Um, and so it's nothing, it's, nothing, it's nothing that I could do. And see, it's the blood. It's the blood that has cleansed me and purified me and washed me. It's his blood. One man brought sin in, one man brought grace in. Adam brought sin in, Jesus brought grace in. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The old is not passing away. If you don't let the old pass away, you can never walk into the new. Amen. Too many of us still hold on to old or what I used to be. That ain't going to work. You got to let him go. That old you, he's got to go. He's got to die. 
He's got to die before you can ever walk into the newness of what God has in front of you. Because God's got something setting in front of you. Oh, hallelujah. He's got something setting in front of you if you could just believe it. If you just could trust him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all, all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. But you got to trust in him. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and believe it. James 4, 7 says, therefore submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the enemy over your life, those situations that you deal with. Resist and he will flee. See, you got to beat the enemy up with the word. Because this is the word that Jesus used on him. And when you understand the power and the greatness of Jesus and what he's already done on Calvary, and he says, when he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And his last words, it is finished. It's done. It's complete. I'm able to walk in the greatness of who he is because he's already completed. Because he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. By his stripes, by his stripes, I am healed. It's by his stripes. It's not by anything else. It's by his stripes that I'm healed. It's by his stripes that you're healed. It's by his stripes. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. What happened to me? See, Jesus Christ is the same. What happened to me? I changed. So it's up to you to make the shift and the change. It's up to you to make the commitment to God and allow him to lead you down the road that he has for you, the great place that he has for you. First John 4, 4 says, greater that he that's in me than he that's in the world. It's a great one that lives inside of me. It's not me, it's the great one, Christ. Finding my identity in Christ. Who am I? That's what you gotta ask yourself. I always wanted to know who I was. I didn't care about that baseball player. I knew I could play baseball, but who am I? It wasn't until I found my identity in Christ and I realized why I was created and the purpose of my life. Are we crazy? Yeah. Am I crazy? Yeah. Do I want this? Do I want that? Yeah, but I don't touch it no more. Do we lust? Do you, do you, do you lust after this and that? What's holding you back? I had the women, I had the drugs, I had the money. I was on my way to hell. What's keeping you back from crossing over and coming in and saying, God, you know what? I'm a sinner. I need a savior. What's keeping you? What's keeping you from, what's keeping you from keeping it real with God? What's keeping you from getting honest with God? What's keeping you from going there with God? What's holding you back? See, the devil is a liar. He will keep you in that place. John 3.30 talks about it. He must increase, but I must decrease. For him to increase in me, I got to decrease. I got to get out of the way. Some of you are holding yourself back from getting out of the way of God's way and letting God rule and reign over your life. Some of you just continue to Say, oh, I don't believe it. Well, all you got to do is go Google me. <laughs> and you can see what kind of heathen I was. You know, I like prostitutes and everything else. Can I preach it? Someone see some of you quiet in here. 
The brother could talk. See, I ain't. See, when you can talk about yourself, you know you've been delivered. <laughs> you, you ain't got no secrets. You know, you ain't got to hide. You don't, you don't have to hide. I don't, I don't have to hide in computers and look at this and look at that to uh, give me this extra thrill inside of myself. Or I don't have to go down on the corner somewhere and look for a hooker, which I loved, because I could be in and out. I'm just keeping it real, brothers. You know, because I want somebody to get free today. I want somebody to be delivered today and set free from their bondage and their chains that's keeping them. Ephesians 3.20 talks about now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him. What's keeping you from finding your identity in Christ? You got to examine yourself and find out what's keeping you from that. What's keep, what kept me from that for so long, gentlemen, is because I was a liar. And I wasn't following Christ. I just knew his name was Jesus. I wasn't walking in obedience to the word of God. It's through the word of God that will make you walk into obedience. And you come to a place of repentance to God. And he is merciful. I mean, he is merciful. I don't know, I don't deserve it, but he is so merciful. I got on my face with him and I said, I'm sorry. And I repent to him. And he sets you free. He delivers you and he sets you free and he brings you into order. And you're able to walk into the greatness of why he created you. So challenge yourself today to go deeper. Challenge yourself to get beside yourself and ask God to help you. And he will help you. Let me pray. Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for your love for these men, Father. Father, I pray that someone's here today needs a transformation. I pray that someone needs a new start, that would, they would come back. I pray for a refreshing over those that need a refreshing, that the Holy Spirit would dwell among their hearts and challenge them and also convict them to come about change. I pray for the unknown sin, because Father, there's no unknown sin with you. You know it all. I pray that they will ask for forgiveness and turn from their wicked ways, Father. And Lord, I just pray that you just allow them to be strengthened to today and encouraged, Father. We honor you, we praise you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.